many of Toya's shootings were crimes against humanity, but we must not fall into the political trap set for us by ultra-conservatives and Freemasons, of which Brevik self-identified himself as a Freemason. This was in many ways Norway's 9-11, but we, just as 9-11 set off a war against terrorism, against the Bin Laden and Saudi crime families, we must have an equally determined effort and campaign against Freemasonry and ultra-conservatism, both in the political spectrum of de-radicalisation, which the EU is launching at present, and also by creating a wall of non, non-political and non-social connections around those people such as Brevik who caused the attack on uh, Oslo and Abtoya. Brevik may have acted alone, he may have acted as a singular force for evil, but he was certainly not alone in terms of being radicalised on the internet. There are thousands of these people and it may have, there may be two cells involved, as I said in the Oslo videos on my channel. Now, in the first three videos on the Westmark, I was talking about a positive solution to the problems of the West, and we cannot let Oslo set us back. We must stand for rational Western ideas of life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, a balance between liberty and equality, and defend our rational beliefs and empiricism of Western ideals under the rule of law. Every We will fight these people, whether they be of the Bin Laden crime family or Freemasonry or ultra-conservatives or any person who uses the tactic of terrorism in the battlefields, in the streets, in the cities and in the towns and we will fight them in terms of ideology because the rational minds of people, when men, women and children are the strongest defence any civilization has against falling. And many people in the West see the civilizational stress which has its fault lines radically and terribly and evilly uh, exposed when people like Brevik use force to expose them. There may be a lack of confidence in the West because of, with the rise of China and the rise of ultra-conservative Freemasonry and also the rise of the Saudi and Bin Laden crime families. But let's put this in perspective. All three of those groups are very powerful groups, but they don't rule the world, and conspiracy theories that say they do are false. We must get a, a idea of the magnitude of the problems that we are facing, but they are not insurmountable in their magnitude. Western civilization is extremely strong. Europe is almost twice the size of China and America's economies put together, even with the financial crisis. America is a superpower with hyper-military hyper status. It has nearly 12 carrier battle groups. It patrols the oceans. It is supreme in the oceans. And the EU is not far behind. On land, the EU has 6 million men under arms. The forces of American capitalism and social European social democracy are extremely strong and we should not lose confidence. We should not fall into the trap of tragedy. We should not fall into the political trap left for us by the people in Oslo, Oslo who did that shooting of those women and children. The political trap is that we, we turn to multiculturalism and the people on the on the other end of the spectrum in a polarizing debate where multiculturalists and ultra conservatives will have their way multiculturalists being that they want to destroy the uh, the racial uh, europe racially european nordic roman and celtic peoples and the ultra conservatives that they want to destroy us through destroying our values of Western rationalism and democracy and the rule of law. So what is the hope? The hope is, that as I said in my first three videos, 
on the subjects of the Westmark that we develop a unified Western civilization by developing a, a unified Western economic, social, political unity between the United States the, and the EU and Canada, Australia, New Zealand, an independent Boer Republic and a Jewish uh, social democratic state in the Horn of Africa and eventually to moderate and make moderate the state of Israel and bring that into the West and to bring the Arabs and Russia into the West through the Arab Spring and a similar democratic spring in Russia. But all things have to have a start and the best way to start them was through Paul Romer's idea of chartered cities. What is a chartered city? A chartered city is a city with rules that are suited and tailored to the economic situation in which there is spare land to use. Only 3% of the world's surface is covered by cities. But yet most people, almost 90% of people, want to live in a city. But many of those people, billions of people, cannot. And billions of people are stuck in poverty and stuck in a cycle of being ejected out of their countries by despots, crime families such as the Bin Ladens and Saudis, feudalistic crime families, and despots such as Ba'athists in Syria, Islamic republics such as Iran, or theocracies such as the Israelis, because the Israelis only let some branches of the Jewish faith live there. Well, these people have no alternative but to go to the West. But we must give them a choice. We must give them a choice whilst we make economic decisions about how we're going to increase the Roman, Nordic and Celtic populations of Europe through such things as providing rental agreements with the rich so that they don't own property and don't create unob unobtainable surplus. My viewers will know what that is. That is effectively the waste created by an, a, a surplus that is too expensive for the majority of people in the market to obtain. And so it's wasted in terms of millions of houses abandoned in Europe and America and, in, and Britain. We must make economic decisions about increasing the birth rate of women and giving them the choice of free university education. But we must also give the people who are coming to Europe a different choice, a different choice to live in a chartered city around the size of twice the size of Manhattan and that the Europeans and the US can build these cities on a mass produ production scale and transport the raw materials to these places such as the, North, the Horn of Africa where a Jewish state could be built and also through a Boer Republic and all along the East African uh, coast and other places in Africa because Africa being the dark continent is well known for being dark because it has no electricity because of poor rules. We cannot wait thousands of years for these people to catch up on their own. We must help them. We must help them by providing good rules and and there is no coercion in this, there is choice. There is a choice with people such as Denmark, who are known as the happiest people in the world, um, who have given their sympathy and support to Norway in its time of need, to administer some of these cities, or, the, um, or Great Britain, or Germany, or members of the EU. Uh, we must unify the Western world under a single currency, and gradually build up our military and economic power so that these chartered cities become bases for European and American forces. Eventually we will get to the point where the Western world is unified and we will have a Westmark nation. This will stare down the China, surely defeat the Saudi and Bin Laden crime families and bring peace and unity to the world. It's not globalism, it's not nationalism, it's a route in between. A route towards rational social democracy where nations, nationalism and social democracy both have a home and they are both moderate and sustainable. And immigration will be at a point of 2 to 4% of the European birth rate. Therefore, I think I've put out a final plan in this series to make a rational Western civilization.